Macrinus was the first Roman emperor not of senatorial rank when he was proclaimed. His reign was short and has been seen as a stopgap emperor between the branches of the Severan dynasty. Early Life Born Marcus Apilius Macrinus into an equestrian family of Moorish origins, circa 165 in Mauritanian Caesarea. Cassius Dio claims that he was the son of the most obscure parents, but they were likely part of the local elite in Caesarea because Macrinus was able to get a good education and practice law in Rome. And while defending a friend in the law courts, he caught the eye of Plautianus, a longtime friend of Septimius Severus whose daughter was married to Caracalla. In 205, Macrinus's patron fell from grace and was executed in the imperial palace following some machinations masterminded by Julia Domna and Caracalla. But Macrinus was able to survive by the intercession of a friend. He was appointed the superintendent of traffic along the Flaminian Way by Septimius Severus, and was later made procurator by Caracalla, and then promoted to be prefect of the Praetorian Guard, probably following the fall of the previous prefect, Opinion, who in 212 was killed during the purge of Geta's supporters. Cassius Dio records that he discharged the duties of this office in a most satisfactory and just manner, insofar as he was free to follow his own judgment. Ascension In 216, Caracalla launched a war in Parthia. The Parthians were initially forced to retreat and regroup while Caracalla was laying waste to the countryside. The Romans wintered at Edessa. On the 8th of April 217, the imperial entourage was moving towards Carai, and while Caracalla was relieving himself at the roadside, he was cut down. The plot had been masterminded by Macrinus. He had recruited a number of soldiers who had personal malice towards Caracalla. The man who actually cut him down was Julius Martialis, who, according to Dio, was angry at Caracalla because the emperor had refused to promote him to Centurion. Caracalla died without a son, so there was no obvious heir. Oclantinius Adventus, Macrinus's colleague as Praetorian Prefect, was offered the throne, but he decided that he was too old to hold such office and declined. Macrinus let a suitable number of days elapse before he had himself proclaimed emperor. He made the traditional show of reluctance, but eventually relented on the 11th of April, Septimius Severus's birthday, and became Emperor of Rome. Cassius Dio describes how the troops had been living in luxury during the winter of 216 and 217. As a result, they were unwilling to continue the war in Parthia. Macrinus was able to win their allegiance by assurances that he would end the war. He sent a letter to the Senate in Rome informing them what had happened. Cassius Dio reports what he wrote. I understand well that you, too, had agreed with the legions, since I had the consciousness of having conferred many benefits upon the state. And in this letter he subscribed himself Caesar, Imperator, and Severus adding to the name Macrinus the titles Pius, Felix, Augustus, and Proconsul, without waiting for any vote on our part, as would have been fitting. He sent the letter with full knowledge that he had on his own responsibility assumed so many and so great titles. Cassius Dio goes on to say that they had no time to take any thought about Macrinus's humble origin and were content to accept him as emperor. Despite being neglected in the promotion of the new emperor, the Senate was delighted. According to Herodian, they rejoiced not so much at Macrinus's succession as at their own deliverance from Caracalla. Macrinus's son, Dia Domenianus, was promoted to Caesar, nominally by the soldiers, and his name was changed to Antoninus, the same name Caracalla was known by. This caused dismay in Rome, but delighted the soldiers as they had always held him in high regard. 
Macronus was sent to be consul for the year 218 together with his previous co-praetorian prefect, which caused alarm in Rome, as he was of even lower birth than Macronus. Dio records that, This man had first served in the mercenary force among the spies and scouts, and upon quitting that position had been made one of the couriers and appointed their leader, and still later had been advanced to a procuratorship, and now the emperor appointed him senator and fellow consul. Artabanus, the Parthian king, took advantage of the change of emperor and launched a counter-offensive into Roman territory. Despite having been Praetorian prefect, Macronus had limited military experience and wanted a quick end to the war. And after a bloody battle close to Nisibis during the summer of 217 which lasted for three days, Macronus sued for peace. As a result, some readjustments of territorial boundaries were made, and the Armenian question was solved by installing Trinidates as king under Roman control. Macronus was forced to pay indemnities to Artabanus. Downfall Caracalla had lavished gifts on soldiers and had increased their pay, and for those reasons he had their undying loyalty. To please the soldiers, Macronus eventually had Caracalla deified, but he also wanted to curb the expenses of the army, so when he enrolled new soldiers, he did so on the line Septimius Severus arranged, not that of Caracalla. This certainly didn't please the soldiers, but Macronus was likely just trying to solve the increasing economic problem of the empire because he also revalued the currency, increasing the silver purity. Caracalla's mother, Julia Domna, was initially left in peace when Macronus became emperor. This changed when Macronus discovered that she was conspiring against him and had her placed under house arrest in Antioch. By this time, Julia Domna was suffering from an advanced stage of breast cancer and died in Antioch soon after her son, perhaps by starving herself or by the earlier mention of cancer. But Julia Domna had an equally ambitious sister, Julia Mesa, whose daughters Julia Soemius and Julia Mamea each had a young son, and Mesa was determined that the elder boy, Varius Avidius Bassianus, should be emperor. She persuaded some of the soldiers that the boy's true father was Caracalla. On the 16th of May 218, Legio III Gallica declared him emperor at its base in Raphania. He was granted the name Marcus Aurelius Antoninus, but history knows him as Elagabalus because of his devotion to the eastern god of the same name. He was only 14 years old at the time. Upon Elagabalus's revolt, Macronus travelled to Apamea and conferred the title of Augustus onto his son Diadomenianus and made him co-emperor. After a battle outside Antioch, where Macronus was defeated by Ganes, who commanded Elagabalus's forces, he fled back to Antioch after sending his son to Artabanus in Parthia. He made for Rome, but was captured in Chalcedon, and his son had been intercepted at Zeugma. Herodian records that Macronus failed to elude his pursuers and met an ignoble end a little later while striving to get to Rome, where he should have gone in the beginning. Thus he owed his downfall to bad judgment and bad luck. Macronus was killed on the 8th of June, 218. Thus Macronus, though an old man, he was 54 years of age, and distinguished for his practical experience of affairs, a man who displayed signs of excellence and commanded so many legions, was overthrown by a mere boy of whose very name he had previously been ignorant. Final thoughts. The lives of such emperors, usurpers or Caesars, as held their throne for no long time lie hidden away in darkness, because in the first place, there is nothing in their private lives worth telling, since they would have remained totally unknown had they not aspired to the throne. And in the second place, not much can be said about their sovereignty, because they did not hold it long. The Historia Augusta
In the two previous reigns of Septimius Severus and his son Caracalla, the soldiers were being pandered to by increasing their pay and allowing soldiers to marry. And when Macrinus tried to reverse some of that, the army resented him and was willing to proclaim anyone with a link to the Severan dynasty. Thanks for watching the video. Remember to like and subscribe to not miss any of our future uploads. The next video in the series will be on Elagabalus.